Hi coders, welcome to another episode of my CSS experiment series, where we explore what can be done with modern CSS3 techniques. Today we will add another tool to our front-end web developer toolkit. We will talk about parallax effect and its implementation in web development and web design. In general definition, parallax is the perceived difference in position of an object from two different places. Take it back to animation web design, parallax is a technique in computer graphics where foreground images move past the camera faster and background images move slower, tricking our brain into creating an illusion of depth in a 2D scene. There are multiple ways to implement parallax with CSS. Today we will do it the proper way with transforms and we will learn about not commonly used translate z CSS function. Just a quick optimization tip if you are new to CSS. If you want to animate element around, if you change left, top, right, bottom value or margin left, margin top, this will trigger a redraw in so-called layout layer in the browser, which triggers a chain reaction and position of every element on the page needs to be recalculated. Changing position with transforms will trigger redraw only in so-called compositor layer. It will change only the element we are animating and it will not affect the rest. If you use Transform Translate, you will notice a huge increase in frame rate and animation smoothness because transforms are already optimized and browser doesn't have to do nearly as many calculations. It's considered a good practice. You might not notice on a strong gaming PC, but a responsible web developer always thinks about users who can visit our site on slower, older machines as well. Most commonly, parallax is used for so-called parallax scrolling, where foreground images move faster than the background images. You can make a really effective website header. This really takes you into the image, doesn't it? The more layers, the better, I guess. <laughs> parallax can also be 3D. Look at that. Wow. <laughs> Look at that. How is that? Isn't it amazing what you can do with web development these days? Uh, inspiration for this effect was this code pen. I was going to do a full thing, but some of you asked me to sometimes include more beginner-friendly tutorials, so I decided to strip it down just the basics. You can see the code pen uses CSS to turn the image around in any direction, which shows off parallax effect so well. And it also includes Quiggle Vision filter. We did that in previous episode on a different example. His code pen is in the video description. There are so many creative coding examples on there, check it out. You can also follow him on Twitter if you want, he's really good. Today we will also take a look at CSS perspective property and I will show you exactly how to use it and what it does. I will provide images you can use for this project. Download link is in the video description. If you want to use your own images, keep in mind a couple of things. You can use any image to create this effect. I'm going with black and white, but that's just my choice. It makes it a bit more easier to crop images correctly. If you're using Photoshop, you just take the crop and lasso tool and cut out parts of the image you want to move and save them in separate PNG files. Here I take the pterodactyls and also T-Rex. Let's cut him out. One thing you need to keep in mind for this effect is that the white area around the T-Rex needs to be transparent, but the actual body of the T-Rex needs to be a solid color. Otherwise, you would see elements that are layered behind it. In Photoshop, easy way to do this is to right-click our layers and select Flatten Image. Then I click the little lock here to unlock the layer. Now I can use Magic Wand Selection tool, which highlights all background with one click, and I press the delete button on my keyboard to get rid of it. And we have transparent background and T-Rex with solid white color. Perfect. In index.html, we create a div with a class of wrapper, which will hold all our elements. Inside, I create a div with a class of frame, and inside of that, I create an image element with a class of clown. Source clown PNG and alt clown. Yes, we are doing the clown. <laughs> I showed you how to create your own images, but there are also some ready to use images available to download in the video description. 
I step out of the frame diff and still stay inside the main wrapper element and I create three image elements with a shared class of balloon. All will have the same source balloon underscore red dot png and alt text balloon. Each of them will have one additional class so I can target them separately with CSS balloon underscore one, balloon underscore two, and three. I also link style CSS file. In style CSS, I apply basic reset rules to make sure our code appears the same across different browsers. I set margin to zero, padding to zero, and box sizing to border box, which means any padding and border will be included in elements total width and height. Diff with a class of wrapper will be the main container that will hold all our elements. We will center it in the middle of the page using absolute centering positioning technique. Position absolute. Let's give it a border so you can see what's going on. Width 600 pixels, height 400 pixels to create our postcard rectangular shape. Top 50%, left 50%, transform translate minus 50%, minus 50% will center our element exactly in the middle of the page, like this. I also give it perspective 1000 pixels. I'll show you how it works and what it does when we build the effect. Frame will have position absolute. Border 5 pixels solid black. I also remove the border on the wrapper element. Width will be 100% of its parent element. Height as well. Overflow hidden will make sure that all its children are contained within this element. I give it background URL and it will be an image town.png. Uh, background size 50% will make it smaller. Background position. Um, by default, a background image is placed at the top left corner of an element and repeated both vertically and horizontally. If we give background position two values in percentages like this, the first value stands for horizontal position on the x-axis from the top left corner and the second value is vertical position on the y-axis. I set background to repeat to X, so it will only repeat horizontally. Now I can change vertical position. Let's try 20%. Hmm, 50%. 90%. Yeah, that's good. Box shadow will be 0, 0, 0 black with 0 0.7 opacity. We will animate it on hover. Clown will have position absolute. Height 300 pixels. Top 10 pixels and right 150 pixels. Balloon is a shared class name for all three balloon images. If I give it position absolute, they will snap to the same position on top of each other. I will also give it pointer events none, so there are no interactions with mouse cursor. Depending on how you handle hover effects, this will prevent balloons from interfering with mouse. Balloon 1. Let's give it height 300 pixels. Left 80 pixels. Bottom 0. I want the clown to hold the second balloon in his hand, so let's try height 200 pixels, right 285 pixels, 
and top 10 pixels. Balloon 3 will have height 250 pixels, top 40 pixels, and right 5 pixels. Now I add hover event on wrapper element. Because we structured our HTML in a way so that wrapper element is a parent of frame element, we can say when the user hovers on the main wrapper element, apply these styles to its child element with a class of frame. Background position minus 10% on the x axis, 90% on the y axis. We'll do this. Let's give frame transition one second. We are trying to create parallax now, illusion of layers, so we will make each element move in the same direction but different speed. Let's give our card some 3D rotation. Transform rotate y 25 degrees will rotate it along the horizontal y axis. You can also see that left side gets larger and right side gets smaller, simulating the 3D space. This is because we put perspective property on its parent element. Let's also give it rotate z minus 15 degrees and translate z 20 pixels. Well, that didn't do much here, did it? Box shadow will be minus 35 pixels, 5 pixels, 10 pixels spread, and black with opacity of 0.2. Nice, I like this. So we have three balloons, all children of the main wrapper element, and each one has a different class name. So I can say again, when user hovers on the main wrapper, apply these styles to its child element with a class of balloon 1. Balloon 2 and balloon 3. Transform translate x, 15 pixels, will push it to the right. Translate y, minus 25 pixels, will move it up. Rotate 10 degrees and scale 0 0.9 to make it slightly smaller. I'm just playing with it now to see what looks good. The second balloon similar values. Let's change translate x to minus 45 pixels and scale to 1.1. And the third balloon translate x minus 30 pixels, which will push it 30 pixels to the left. Perspective property defines how far the object is away from the user. If I change it to 2000, we are quite far and there is almost no difference between regular and hover state when we rotated the element. Look at what happens if I change the perspective to 800 pixels. Lower value will result in more intensive 3D effect than a higher value. Also remember that we define perspective on a parent, but only the children get the perspective view, not the parent itself. To really illustrate the effect, look at what happens when I put 100 pixels. We are now very close to the element and the skew effect is pronounced. Let's make it look nice and set the perspective back to 1000 pixels. Good job if you managed to code along. If you want to practice your coding skills further, check out my CSS Experiments playlist. Or if you want something a bit more challenging, try some generative art algorithms from my vanilla JavaScript and HTML Canvas animation series. Also, like, subscribe and hit the bell icon, please. <laughs> See you next time.